I might have been a sermon that I entitled, The Devil Wants to Take Our Big Toes and Also Our Big Thumbs. Now, to say that, I want us to know that I was reading an article this morning about during the Vietnam War, young men considered, considered drastic measures to dodge the draft, to flee the country, to fake asthma attacks, or shoot off their big toes. An amputee, according to Legendary's legend, would be unfit to trudge across rice paddies or move fast to escape enemy fire. Even today, missing a big toe would disqualify an eager investee for the armed forces. The Department of Defense's medical standards require rejecting anyone in the armed forces with a current absence of a foot or any portion thereof. And I thought about this today, and I just want you to know that it's very important. That I taught this sermon, the devil wants to take our big toes and our big thumbs. And I say that because I want you to know that in our text say there was a king. His name was Adonai, Adonai Bezek. And he was a destroyer of men. He was a destroyer of kings. And I, I, and I read what he said when you read the story about Adonai Bezek. He was a king that was a conqueror of kings. And when you understand what's going on taking place, he was literally dethroned. But he went after the royal bloodline. He went after the, the people of God. He went after the kings. And he went after many things. And just like this picture, it's a picture of you and I, what the devil wants to do to you and I. The devil is a destroyer. The devil's going after the royal bloodline of Jesus Christ. And what, what he's doing in our day and age to so many of God's people is literally he's taking off their big thumbs and also their big toes. And reading David in, in Judges chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, but Adonai and Bezek fled and they pursued after him. And they caught him and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. And Adonai and Bezek said, three score and ten kings or seventy kings have their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table as I have done. So God God has requited me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. We just want to pray. Father, we come before you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for your goodness, for your grace, and God, for your mercy, God. I thank you, God, that you're a restorer, God. I thank you, God, that we have victory over the enemy, Lord God. And God, as I pray, as I decrease, God, that you would increase, God, that you would be glorified, God. We pray, God, that you would move, that you would meet us here, Lord. We pray for every life, God, they will be transformed and no one will walk out the same people they came in. We give you thanks and God, we give you glory. And everybody believing God in the name of Jesus saying amen. And amen today. You know, this verse of scripture is a picture of so many Christians in our day and age today because the word of God tells you and I that we are called to be kings and priests. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible tells you and I that Jesus has made us to be kings and priests of the God. The first Peter chapter 2 verse 9, it says, but you are a, a, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And you and I are called to reign as kings. You and I are called to be the royal blood of Jesus running through our veins. In this picture of this king called Adonai Bezek, his name literally means Lord of Lightning or Lord of Bezek or even Lord of Disperse. That word lightning literally means disperse. And some of you probably know, some commentaries say that uh, Adonai Bezek literally means the Lord of Lightning. Adonai is Lord, Bezek is Lightning. And I thought about that, and some commentaries believe that that's one of the names of Satan because of the Bible says in the book of Luke that Satan, that Jesus says that I saw Satan falling as lightning. And I thought about this day. It gives you a picture what the devil wants to do to you and I. Now, some of you might say, what, what's the big deal about thumbs and about toes? I think we all know that if you cut off your big toes and you cut off your thumbs, what begin to happen? You can't run. You can't fight. Uh, it's hard for you to grab a sword and do certain things. And this king was a destroyer of kings. He went after the royal blood. And I think about our generation today. The devil's after the kings and priests of our home. The devil's after men of God and saying, listen, I want to take away your authority. I want to take away your power. And the devil literally wants to take away your big toes and also your big thumbs. And I thought about this today. And imagine for a moment that you're invited to a royal banquet by, by a king named Adonai Bezek. Now think about this king. This king was a conqueror. This king was a dethroner. This king went after the royal blood. And it kind of reminds you of the devil. The devil's after the royal blood of Jesus. He's after the kings and the priests of God. He's after you and I. And what this king did was he literally conquered kingdom after kingdom and grabbed their kings, grabbed the royal blood, and he began to take these kings and cut off their thumbs and cut off their big toes. Now you can imagine that if you were literally 
welcome to this king's house. You can imagine him inviting you into a royal banquet. This king's name is Adonai Bezek. And you can imagine almost any food that you could hope for on the table. And over to one side, you begin to notice a strange sight. Because here this king says that I had 70 kings under my table every single day that would eat scraps all day long. And he treated them like dogs. He had these kings that were conquering over kingdoms. Kings that had authority. Kings that were literally royal and royalty. Kings that were supposed to reign in their lives. He had them under his table. And you can imagine going to his kingdom. You can imagine going to his palace. And all of a sudden he invites you in. And all of a sudden you look to the side. And all of a sudden you see a strange sight. You see a group of men chained to a table. And they're begging for food. You see the king throw a piece of meat to the group of these men. And you watch them scramble. You watch them fight for their food. And you, the king begins to laugh. You notice something, though, in particular, very strange about all these kings, is that they can't pick up their food. They can't pick up their fruit properly because they're missing their thumbs, they're missing their big toes. And who are these 70 kings of Adonai Bezek that he conquered in battle? And it shows us something today that that's what the devil wants to do to you and I. But I want you to know that God is a God that can restore your big toes. God is a God that can restore your thumbs today. God is a God that can do amazing things inside of your life. And when you think about about this king today, you have to understand that his name literally means the Lord of lightning or the one that disperses. And that word disperse literally means to scatter. It means to distribute or literally, be, well, to, to, literally to disappear, to make something begin to vanish away. And that's what this king did. This king went out and conquered kingdom after kingdom after kingdom. With great speed, he would conquer his enemies. Now, the sad state of this thing is that the 70 kings that they were defeated. That's what I want you to look at today because when you think about this, in the Vietnam War, there were men that were willing to shoot off their feet because they didn't want to go to war. They would shoot off their big toes. And that's a sad thing for anything. But our government knew as well as the world knows that if a man doesn't have big, uh, big toes at all, he can't stand, he can't run, he can't fight. He can do certain things, but he's not going to be able to be what he's called to be. If a person doesn't have thumbs at all, it's hard for him to grab things. He can't hold a sword. He can't fight. And that's what they would do to these kings. But I believe also this is the same thing the devil's doing in our generation today. We have men and women of God that can't hold the sword of God. We got men and women of God that can't stand and fight and conquer and war and battle the way God wants them to battle because they allow the enemy to cut off their big toes. They allow the enemy to cut off their thumbs. Now the first thing I want to look at today which is very important is the sad state of these 70 kings. These 70 kings represent a lot of things today but I want you to look at it as a devil trying to do something to our generation. Because you look at today, the sad thing was they were defeated. They were not told how they were defeated, but we know they were defeated. But maybe there was many reasons why they got defeated. These kings were defeated. Number one, they could have been ambushed. And the Bible tells you and I that we're not called to be ambushed. How does the devil cut off our thumbs? How does the devil cut off our big toes? How does he do that? And sometimes he begins to ambush you and I. But it's right here the Word of God says in 1 Peter 5 eight: Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary is the devil as a roaring lion walk about seeking who may devour. And the Bible gives us a picture. The devil's always waiting. He's always lurking. He literally begins to go after. He's a prayer, which means he plays upon us. He waits for an opportunity to pounce upon you and I. And maybe these kings somewhere down the line, they got ambushed somewhere. And I mean, we don't want to be ambushed. And this is why we have to understand there is a real devil out there that wants to cut off your authority, wants to cut off your standing, and wants to cut you off so you cannot be with God has called you to be. When you think about these 70 kings, maybe they got ambushed. They also could have been outmanned. I mean, we try to go to the battle alone sometimes. We try to fight the devil by ourselves sometimes. We live in a generation where people say, I don't need to go to church. Or, I don't need to go to the house of God. And I always tell people, if you don't like to be in the house of God, you ain't going to like to be in heaven at all. Because that's where the kingdom of God is going to be. The church of God is going to be with heaven. You ever see people, I don't got to go to church. Well, maybe you don't got to go to heaven either because the church is going to be in heaven. But it was Jesus' custom to go to the house of God. It was his custom. And if it, it was Jesus' custom to be in the house of God. How much more are you and I? But these 70 kings, maybe they were out there. And sometimes we go to try to go to the battle by ourselves against the devil. I mean, we can't whoop the devil by ourselves at all. By ourselves, he will whoop us. By ourselves, he will defeat our lives. But with Christ in our lives, we can do all things. This is why Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Maybe they could have got outsmarted. 
In Ephesians 6, 11, it's put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. This is why the devil could outsmart us. The devil could literally deceive you and I. And this is why we have to be led by the Spirit of the living God today. The second Corinthians 2, 11, is least Satan should be the advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The Bible tells you and I that we're not to be ignorant of his devices, but some of them are these kings they can be ignorant of Satan's devices or ignorant that they can be caught or ignorant that they can literally they can get away from God. Another thing you got to think about is maybe literally they could have been outsmarted. They could have been outsmarted. They could have been underarmed. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13, Wherefore taken to you the whole armor of God that you be able to stand in the evil day having done all the stand. You and I need to be armed to God. You and I need to stay strong for the Lord. Now I say that because whatever the reason is, when the battle was all over, they were defeated. And I believe it's a picture of our generation. I believe the devil wants to literally dethrone God's people. And it's right here that we understand that they were, de they were dethroned. These kings were dethroned. You and I are called to reign in God. You and I are called to have the authority of God. What this king did, you have to understand that he dethroned these 70 kings. These, these kings were meant to rule. They have the royal blood that had been given by the throne of God. We, they were meant to, meant to rule, to reign, just like we are. We're meant to rule. We're meant to reign. We're meant to rule over Satan, rule over the darkness, and be literally light bearers of God. But some of them line, these kings, 70 of them, which was a lot of them, were under this man's table, living like peasants today. See, I want you to think about what I'm saying here, because we're called to reign today as well. Not only that, but the second thing, they were disabled. Think about what the devil did to them and what this king did to them. They disabled him. You can press the next slide. They disabled him. And that's a sad thing when you think about it because the Bible shows you that the enemy began to disable the people of God. Now think about no thumbs. If you don't have no thumbs, you cannot hold a sword in battle. With no thumbs, they cannot hold a sword. They were, they were no threat to anybody at all. That's why these kings would do this to kings. They would grab these kings and say, we're going to make sure that you can never fight again. We're going to make sure you never war again. We're going to make sure you can never pick up a sword ever again and fight. In fact, you'll be defeated and you'll be disabled. Another thing that they would do also is they would cut off their big toes. They could not stand, they could not fight, or they could not run. Now, you can do certain things without big toes. I don't know if you ever had dreams of your toes missing, but I had dreams where I, I looked at my toe one day, and I said, I don't like my toes, so I cut it off in my dream, and I threw it in a trash can. And it wasn't until like weeks later that I said, man, I missed my toe and I couldn't walk. And I don't know why I had that dream. Maybe it's because of the sermon. But I went back to that trash can a week later to go get my toe to bring it back to the doctor. This is a dream. I got some weird dreams. Took my toe out of the trash can and it was bones. I said, man, I can't give this to the doctor. They can't put this on. But it was right there in my dream. I said, man, I wish I never would have cut my toe off. Then I woke up and it was weird. Okay, so just one of those weird things. But what I'm trying to say is that when you think about what's going on here today, that with no big toes, they could not stand. They could not fight. They could not run. You see, with the great toe missing, they were unstable. They could not stand and fight. They could not be literally stable in God and keep their stance. Because your big toes keep you where well, you can keep your stance, you can run, you can do all these things. So it, what they did is they, they lost their ability to use the sword of the Spirit. They lost their ability to stand and go forward in victory. And that's what the enemy wants to do in our lives today. And maybe we're here today and maybe your big thumbs are cut off. Maybe you allowed the enemy to cut off your big toes because it was very important for kings that have these things because if they did not have them they could not be in victory they could not use their sword and it kind of reminds of the new testament in our generation today we need to literally use the sword of the spirit but there's so many men of god and women of god that have their thumbs broken that they can't even hold the word of god they can't live the word of god or maybe they're in a place where they keep falling all the time because a king or a person doesn't have big toes they'll begin to fall all the time they'll begin to mess up all the time they'll begin to be unstable all the time and i want to know that God is a God that, that's given out some new big toes today, that's given out some new thumbs today, because the cutting off of thumbs makes, the, make, makes work with the hands impossible. The cutting off of big toes makes walking difficult. And disable means that they were not able to accomplish the work of God. They were not able to conquer as kings. You see, with no thumbs, they could not hold a sword. They were no threat to anybody. With no big toes, they were unstable, they could not fight, and they could not run if they needed to run. And it reduced the kings to a state of dependency. 
What it did was it made the kings have to depend on other people. So they sat there under the king's table and he took them captive. Adonai Bezek took them captive and now these kings begin to be dependent upon other people. And I believe that we live in a generation today that is doing the same thing where they allow the enemy to cut off their thumbs. They allow the enemy to cut off their big toes. But they are now, they're dependent upon other people. But God is saying, listen, I want you to be dependent upon me. God is a God that we can depend on God. We don't have to depend on anybody but the Lord inside of our lives. But it's right here, these kings now, they begin to be dependent. See, the, the, I want you to understand what the men of God did of Judah. They grabbed this king. I mean, what you sow is what you're going to reap, no matter what. And it gives you a picture, literally, that the men of Judah grabbed this king. These are the people of God. And Judah means praise. And the men of Judah grabbed this king, and they did the same thing that he did to other people. These men of Judah grabbed this king, Adonai Bezek, cut off his big toes, cut off his thumbs, and it was right here that he says, but Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued after him, and they caught him, and they cut off his thumbs and his great toes. These are the people of God that did this to this crazy king. And verse 7 says, and Adonai Bezek said, 70 kings, having their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table. As I have done, so God has requited me or requited me, and they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. It was right there, you guys, that whatever uh, you sow, you begin to reap. This king had a, literally a problem of cutting people down, of destroying people's lives, but it gives you a picture of the devil today. It gives you the picture of the devil, what's going to happen in his life, that one day he's going to pay for what he's done to God's people. But it also shows you and I today that Satan comes along and he wants to push you over. He wants you to fall. And if you don't got toes that can hang, you don't got toes that are there, when temptation comes your way, you'll fall away from God. You won't be able to be stable. You won't be able to run. You won't be able to fight. Another thing you begin to see also what this king did to these men was not only what he made them disabled, but he disgraced them. You see, they were once kings. They were royal treatment people. You ever see backsliders you got, guys? And you look at them and it's like, man, what happened? Because they were royalty. When you serve God, you're royalty. When you serve God, you're literally kings and priests of God. You're called to reign over the devil, not him, reign over you. And the sad thing about these kings today is that literally they, they were once kings and they lost the royal treatment. Now they're beggars. Now they're humiliated. Now they lost their testimony. Now they're living like the world. We have a lot of Christians that are like that where at one time and they were there on the cutting edge and they knew what they were. They knew, understood that I know who I am in God. I know who I serve in God. But now you see them because the enemy has came into their life, cut off their big toes, cut off their thumbs, and now they're there and they're disgraced inside their lives. Now I say this because I understand that, that this king, they, I don't know how best it because the devil is like that. He disgraced them. He oppressed them. He made them live off the scraps that, that lived, literally had under his table. He made it difficult for them to do anything. He defeated them. He dethroned them. He disabled them. He disgraced them. And that's what the enemy wants to do to our lives. He wants to dethrone us, defeat us, disable us, and also disgrace us. And it's a picture of many Christians in our lives. In Revelation 1, 6, again it says, He has made us kings and priests for God. In 1 Peter 2, 9, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You know what I like the Old Testament? Because the Old Testament shows you a picture of reality and who we're supposed to be. The Old Testament shows the reality of what the devil wants to do to our lives because that's a physical thing that happened, but it happened spiritually today. And today in our generation, the devil is cutting off a lot of thumbs and a lot of big toes in the kingdom of God. That's why you get people that fall away and people that can't stand strong. Where well, you have to know that you have the authority over the devil. That you have to begin to say, listen God, I am not going to allow this king to ambush me or to trick me or to come into my lives. You see, the last thing I want you to understand is that God would deal with Satan, just like he dealt with his king. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, we have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But as you read this, it kind of gives you also the good news of something today. Or that his name, but Adonai Bezek, or the Lord of Lightning, or the devil himself, fled. And they pursued after him, the people of God did and they caught him, cut off his thumbs and his great toes. And Adonai Bezek said, Seventy kings, having their thumbs and great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table, as I have done, so God has requited me or requited me. He understood, listen, the reason why I'm dying and the reason why this is happening 
because God has judged my life for what I've done in my life. You see, this sermon can be took in all kinds of ways. It can be took in where some of us, we cut people off. But we shouldn't cut people off. When you cut people in pieces, you're going to be cut in pieces one day. But it also shows us here something greater. It shows this king named Ab 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 Adonai Bezek. It's like the devil. He's after your authority. He doesn't want you to stand strong. He doesn't want you carrying your sword. He doesn't want you being all that God's called you to be. He wants you disgraced. He wants you dethroned. He wants you disabled. He doesn't want you walking in the victory of God. But this scripture also shows us the judgment of God. For one day the devil's going to be defeated. One day the war is going to end. One day God's going to bring the devil. And the Bible says that we'll begin to see him and say, is this the God that did this? And we're going to be amazed at how he looks like. We're going to be amazed. Like, is this the one that made the earth to tremble? Is this the one that did all this evil? Is this the one that did it? But one day we're going to know. And God's going to show us and say, listen, the devil's no longer going to be the devil anymore. I'm going to take him, destroy him, throw him to a thousand years in prison. After that, let him release for a little while and then throw him into the pit of hell one day. You see, I say this to say this day that God will give us victory one day. But until then, you guys, we've got to keep our thumbs. We've got to keep our big toes. We have to keep the authority of God. So how do you gain victory in your life? In 1 John 5, 4, what, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith today. You see, victory comes by receiving the victory already made possible through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you today, maybe you don't have Jesus. Maybe you don't have God inside your life. Maybe you're here today and you feel like, man, I'm disabled. Man, I'm dethroned. I'm disgraced and all these things. Well, God is a God that, listen, He's in the business of giving brand new thumbs. He's in the business of giving brand new big toes. I'll never forget when I came to God, I was dethroned. I was disgraced. I was all these things, but God put some new thumbs. He gave me a hitchhiker thumb. Look at that. Bam! It's called a hitchhiker thumb. That's what they call it. Everybody has different thumbs. There's a, there's a name for every one of your thumbs. That's called a hitchhiker thumb because it bends back. That's just how I roll. My wife's thumb's different. Hers is long and tall. Everybody is different. But I say this to say this to you guys today. Outside of Christ, there's no victory at all. There's no excuse for being overcome by the devil. In John 16, 33, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And I don't know where we're at today, many of us. But as I begin to say this and look at this, I say this is how the devil works. He comes in and he's a conqueror of kings. He comes in, he's after the royal bloodhood. You are the kings and priests of God. You are the royal blood of Jesus inside your veins. But understand there's a king out there called Adonai Bezek that is after the authority of God. He's after to take your big toes. He's after to take your thumbs. He's, he doesn't want you holding the sword. He doesn't want you fighting him. He didn't want you disabled. He wants you disgraced. He wants you to feel like you cannot do it at all. But with the authority of God, you can. You can stand and you can fight and you can win with the Lord. You see, as I wind this down to a close today, we see that, that Satan's day is coming, that he's not going to get away with it all the time. But we know that one day that God's going to literally pay him in full. As I close today, I thought about literally the Levitical priesthood or the priests of Aaron and Aaron. And what they would do in Levit Leviticus chapter 8, verse 22.